In this video, you will learn the basic usage of Google Calendar. Customize your calendar. The first thing you'll want to do is head over to Google Calendar and change some basic settings so that it, um, you know, it's the way you like it to be. So click on the gear icon, then on settings and the language and country. These settings are derived from your Google account, but you might want to tweak it. Uh, date format, check that out. Um, also the time format, especially in Europe. Um, if you're from a non English speaking country, you probably prefer the 24 hours. But if you have the language set to English UK, like I do, it will automatically suggest the 12 hour format. So you would have to switch that like so. Then if you scroll a little bit down, there's the event settings, the default event settings. In my case, whenever I create a new event, the default is 60 minutes, but you can go ahead and change that. And you can also have speedy meetings. The idea here is that um, instead of a full hour, it's 50 minutes instead of um, 30 minutes at 25 minutes, which is, you know, a good idea if you want time in between meetings to just get a um, have a bio break or whatever you need. Then the notification settings, go ahead and have a look at that. Um, I've set this up to have desktop notifications and that it plays a notification sound. If you scroll a little bit further down, you'll find the view options. Here you can set up if you don't want to see weekends or uh, this one is important show declined events. That's something I always have on because I might decline one of two events because they're competing for my time. But what happened if event A is then rescheduled and I would be av available for event B. Now, if I do not show decline events, I probably won't remember when I'm scrolling through my calendar that event B would still be on. So that's why I always show declined events. Um, a lot of people like to show the week numbers and here you can choose on which day should your week start? For me, it's general on Monday. For others, it might be Saturday or Sunday. So you can go ahead and change that. You can set a custom view if you want to. And I would say that's the most important when it comes to the viewing options. Then onto the working hours and locations. This is not a must, but I suggest you start using this. So first up, let's start with the working hours here. I can let my colleagues know when it is that I'm available to work. So here nine to five is the default, but maybe in my case, I prefer to start working a little bit earlier, but I might, you know, finish working a bit uh, earlier as well. So on Tuesday, I might have a very different schedule, something like this. Um, but then I might want to work afterwards again. So maybe from five till seven. Um, so, you know, whatever suits your needs, maybe you don't work on Fridays. So just go ahead and disable Fridays. I would also suggest you enable the working location. This is where you can let people know where you will be working from. So maybe on these days you work from the office and here, uh, you work from home and here too. Uh, let's say from the office, whatever it is. And this will repeat on every single week. That is the most important thing to set up, especially when you're new to Google calendar, there's no need to saving this changes because it saves automatically. So all you have to do is exit the settings. Calendar overview. Now in general, your calendar probably looks like this. Um, but a lot of people don't know is that you can make the calendar view here a bit wider just simply by hiding the main menu like so. So if you click on this button, the main menu is hidden where you have the month overview, the meet with me and the different calendars that you might be subscribed to. I'd also like to point out to the week numbers up here. We see it's week 42 currently. That is something that is being displayed because I set that to be displayed in the settings before. Now, if I click here on week, I can choose the layout. Currently it's week. I might want to see the month view or the day view. And you remember I set the custom setting to two days. That's the reason why I have this available. Um, if you set it maybe to three days and in this case you would see here three days, let's go back to the week. Cause I also want to show you get, uh, from here, I could say show weekends and then they would be displayed right here and I can undo that like so. 
I can scroll through the weeks up here, or if I have the day view, I would scroll through the days up here. And on the left in the main menu, that's where I scroll through the months. And do also click here on settings and have a look at the density and color, play around with that. I've left it on the default settings because it works perfectly fine for me, but you might want to um, play around with those settings as well. Schedule events. We have a couple of different options. Um, I'm going to click in here and search for Adam. I could search for anyone in organization or in my contacts. There you go, Adam. And um, by the way, this is where the working hours come in handy because I see here, this is outside of um, Adam's working hours. So that's where your colleagues see the settings you've made in your working hours. So. Adam is here, meet with, that means that I can click in the calendar and automatically um, he's added to the guest list and it's given the name of the both of the people. That is one way, I'm not gonna save this right now and I'm gonna undo that. Another way to create a new calendar invitation is to click on create here and then it will just, um, the next possible hour or next uh, possible um, event, it's gonna add it here like so, that's an option. Um, I very often actually create a new event like so by clicking in the time I want the event to happen from, let's say at 10.30 on Wednesday, and then I add the title. So what I could do is say, um, I don't know, team meeting, here you have the option, is it repeated or not? Uh, let's add a guest here. Let's say we're meeting with Adam. And I don't know if you noticed this, but automatically a Google Meet link was added. So I might not need that. I could remove this um, if we're meeting in person, maybe at the office, but if you know we will be joining virtually to the call, then it makes absolute sense to leave that like so, because we then, once the meeting starts, just both click on that link from our respective calendars and are brought to the correct call. Um, if we were to meet in a room, we could add it here like so and uh, location this is interesting because it's hooked up to google maps so let's say i wanted to meet at the cafe Sprüngli in uh, zurich then i could just add this like so um, i can add a description the meeting is about and so on and so forth i could add an attachment maybe a document that we will be working on. Let's say the Eisenhower matrix, it's a jam, so it's a Jamboard file. And this is newer, create meeting notes. If I click on that, then um, the meeting notes that have been added to this calendar invite will be automatically shared with Adam and they're saved to my drive of the creator of this event. And we see the creator of this event is Jane Example. We are using her calendar to do so. I could click on save now, perfectly fine. I just also wanna show you that if you click on more options, you're brought to the detail view that might give you a bit of a better overview. Once I'm happy with this, I can click on save and send. And by the way, if you're inviting someone who's outside of your organization, you will see another little alert just asking you, are you sure you want to invite this person who's outside of your organization? You can say send anyway and the person will receive the invite. Respond to events. Usually when you get invited to an event, you'll notice because you receive an email notification. And if you're using Gmail, you can also respond directly in that message. So I'm gonna open this up. I see the detail information here. And I could say if I'm joining this meeting by simply clicking on yes. So this is meeting with customer Z, Tuesday, the 21st of October. Let's have a look here, meeting with customer Z. So if I click on it, I can see that Jane accepted this invite. And on a side note, you see this little moon here? If you hover over it, it says outside working hours. So this meeting is partially at least outside of the working hours of Adam and of Jane. So setting your working hours does not mean that your colleagues cannot invite you to a meeting outside of those hours, but instead they receive a visual hint that they invited you for a meeting that you might not wanna join because it's outside of your working hours. Now, I can also accept a calendar invite by 
in my calendar, clicking on it, you see how this looks different compared to this calendar invite here, how this has a color border, but a transparent background. Well, if I click on it, I can accept this invite from within my calendar and I can choose to say that I'll be in a meeting room joining this meeting. So live maybe in the office or I'm joining virtually. I'm going to say I'm joining virtually. And since this is a recurring meeting, I can say if I only want to answer for this event or let's say for all of the followings, uh, this and all the following or all events. So let's go ahead and do that like so. And if I have a look, so it's team retro in our calendar. Let's have a look how this has been um, worked on or uh, how should I say processed here. So I'm not seeing anything yet, but let me just go ahead and refresh this because there you go. You have been invited and here you see, yes, I didn't click on that. Um, but through the refreshing, it kind of like, I guess, went to look in the color and calendar and saw that I, that I accepted this invitation. So that has been processed too. Um, let's go ahead and delete these two. How about the third one, the prep meeting for customer set. Now, sometimes we get invited to meetings and the time is just not suitable to us. How can I suggest a new time for this invitation? If I want to do so in the invitation in Gmail, I have to click on more options and then propose a new time. Or if I want to do so in the calendar, I click on it and then it's a little bit hidden, but I can click on this arrow and say, propose a new time, no matter which route I choose. So either from the calendar or from the Gmail invitation, I'm brought to the screen where I can say, um, let's, I don't know, let's have this meeting a little bit earlier. Uh, could we meet earlier? No, that's not right. Earlier, like so spell it correctly and send out the proposal. So my answer currently is maybe, um, and I'm going to send out the proposal like so. That's why you see this is maybe this is my new proposal. And the person who proposed this invitation can either accept or also decline this new proposal. And once uh, in this case, Adam does so, it will also be updated in my calendar. By the way, you can also add notes to invitations. Let me use this to demonstrate it. So I can again, click on this icon here, add a note. Um, I don't know, looking forward to this, for instance, and the, I could send this out and there you go. Looking forward to this. This is the note I added before visible for everyone in that calendar invite. We're now seeing Adam's view of the situation with this suggested new time. Here we see that uh, Jane has proposed a new time um, and she's added a little note to that. And we could say review proposed times and, um, you know, maybe we need, I don't know, to check something, but if we think, Hey, this is perfectly fine. then we could go ahead and say save, uh, we might want to add, um, an update and say, um, I don't know, give further information. So now this has been changed. So let's change over to Jane's view because now things look a bit differently here. It has been updated and it reflects exactly the time that Jane proposed. So I could say in this case, yes. And this worked out perfectly fine because we did not bump into the limitations. Now the limitations are that you can only suggest a new time if an event does not contain more than 200 guests and it's not an all day event. Manage events. If you want to update an existing calendar invitation, you can do so by selecting it and then clicking on the pencil icon and then adding whatever it is you need to add. Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and also add Craig. There you go. And send this out. Um, what is the message I want to add to the update? Just write something and here you go, because Craig is not within our organization. Just a little hint. Are you sure you want to invite that person? And since we're also sharing a document with the people and on our calendar invite, I need to share it with Craig because he's not part of our organization. He does not have access to our share drive. If you're wondering what share drives are, then I have a video on that and um, I'm going to grant him viewing rights. So there you go. Okay. Perfectly fine. So. 
So that has been updated. If I click on it again, what I see here is Craig has not answered yet, but Adam has, and obviously Jane as the organizer also, the status is that she will be attending. So here is where you would see, uh, in this case also, you always have a short overview that two have answered with yes, and you are awaiting one answer. By the way, here you can copy the guest email addresses, here you can chat with them, and here you can send them an email. What happens if you need to cancel this meeting for whatever reason, then simply go ahead and say delete event uh, won't be happening. There you go. And you can send this out to everyone and it will be deleted from the calendars. It will be placed in their trash where it will stay for 30 days and then automatically be deleted. But you can also go ahead to your trash and go ahead and delete whatever message is there. If you want to, you access it by clicking on settings, then bin. Keep in mind, I'm using UK English. So if you're on American English, it probably says trash. And there you go. There's our team meeting that I just deleted before. View other people's calendar. If you want to find out how you can share your calendar with others, with your colleagues, um, how you can set the permissions, well, then you won't find anything in this video, but I have a detailed video about sharing permissions that I'll be linking right about now. Today, I'd like to show you how you can subscribe to other people's calendars. So let's say Jane wants to see Adam's calendar. So what she does, she has to make sure that the main menu is visible. She scrolls down to other calendars and clicks on the plus, and then she can say subscribe to calendar and simply go ahead and search for your colleagues. So this is hooked up to your company's directory. If you're using Google workspace at your organization, um, yep. Adam's calendar, click back on settings. And if I scroll back down here, you'll see Adam's calendar in this kind of like grayish. You can also change the color if you want to. Maybe we want this to be, I don't know, green. There you go. On a side note, you can also change the color of your own calendar if you want to. So I see Adam's calendar now, but what if I don't always want to see it? Only sometimes when I need to search for something. Well, I can just simply go ahead and um, hide his calendar. And whenever I need to check it again, I click on Adam Muster and there you go. Don't go anywhere yet because I need you to take action. I need you to subscribe to this YouTube channel because I don't want you missing out on any of the video tutorials that we share here about Google Calendar, Gmail, Drive, Google Apps Script, meaning how you can automate tasks and processes or write your own macros and sheets. So hit the subscribe button and keep on watching our videos.